Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the heaviest show in the universe, and today we are on part two of our deep dive into the freshman albums of the big four of thrash metal. Today we are covering Show No Mercy and Kill Em All to see who is crowned champion of the freshman big four albums. Let's get into it. All right, so we got Fistful of Metal and we have Killing Is My Business out of the way. We got two more albums left to go over and that'll be either Show No Mercy or Kill Em All next. And if we roll one or two or three, we'll be doing Show No Mercy. If we roll four, five, six, we'll be doing Kill Em All. So let's roll the dice of Destiny to find out which album gets the hammer next. Ho, 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 Show No Mercy. All right, Evil Has No Boundaries, a great way to start this album off, man. I love that main riff, the band. It's like you're galloping into this uh, abyss of whatever's coming after you. I don't know, demons or something chasing after you, and you're going head forward because Evil Has No Boundaries, and they're coming for you, and you are going to have to squash them. One thing I'll say that really stands out in this song is uh, Carrie King and Jeff Hanneman soloing. They're always known as it went forward to be like guitar rapists when it comes to their solos. And that is a fair critique of how it sounds. But if you go to 1983 when this album was released and you hear the way they're soloing on here, it's actually really, really cool to think of it in the perspective of that time. The way King is using that whammy bar to really pull and bend the notes and create an evil kind of sound within the solo is really interesting and really cool, especially for that time period. So. I really love that descending kind of minor scale riff in the beginning. The bit of the damn, bit of the damn, but damn. That is really cool. I love it. It's one of my favorite Slayer riffs of all time. This is a great song so far. And you really hear Dave Lombardo's like, boop a tap, boop a tap, boop a tap, boop a tap. It isn't what he would uh, get known for later on in his career. His kind of frantic way of drumming, but this is really sick right off the bat. I love it. that the way they play that main riff while the solo is going on. Love it. Oh, this is a wicked riff. I love that part of the of the solo. This is it get. So on, on this song, it's not really reaching the heights of the previous three, and the the drumming of, of Dave Lombardo, like the, the kick is super bassy. There's a lot of like boom, boom, boom. So far, Fight Till Death is probably the worst song in this album that I've heard so far. And next up, we're getting to Metal Storm Face the Slayer, which is like half instrumental, I believe. This one goes a Slayer instrumental. Let's listen. I like that. I like that. Oh yeah, I like that. Damn.
I love that main riff. Oh. Mmm, mmm, tasty, tasty licks. Oh, damn. Damn. Oh, fantastic, man. Whew. I love the whole vibe of this song. The way it starts off with that awesome eerie intro and it guides into, it's like, now you're facing the Slayer. Like you walk through the storm, now it's time to face the Slayer, which I could only assume is this Baphomet Satan looking guy on the cover of their album. We're gonna face this guy, we're gonna kick his ass because we just made it through the metal storm. Good song, good freaking song. One thing I'm noticing on this song is that the drumming has picked up its end of the weight. It's picked up its weight on this song, and it's great to see. It's finally, it's finally great to see Dave Lombardo really adding to the music as opposed to holding it back. Ah, honestly, probably the worst solos so far on the album. Probably not the best song on the album. What a classic song, Black Magic. What a classic, classic song. Good tune. What happened, Dave Lombardo? You take like a wake up pill or... Uh, I don't know, what'd you do, man? Cause now you're really picking up your weight these uh, past uh, two, three songs. Oh, ho, ho. Na, na. that riff. Fire! That's that is sick. Oh. So that chorus riff, the chromatic dissension, and then as a take on the main riff, they would. So in the main riff they would go dam pa pa da da dam pa pa da pa da 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 in the chorus he descends the first two bars but then instead of the ba da da he adds a natural harmonic at over top of Arise singing it's really sick I don't like it back here. The whole So right off the bat, I'm noticing that the guitars are taking a backseat, but the drumming is really taking off here. I assume that Lombardo is finding his groove. He's really getting into his own here as the album goes along. And we'll see that as part of his repertoire, The what you hear in the final command. You'll hear this as part of his repertoire going forward in Hell Awaits and as well as especially in Rain and Blood. Drumming, yeah. Dave, where were you the first five songs? You know, one of the first things that really got me hooked on thrash as a kid were those open 16th note palm mutes that, you know, Slayer and, and Metallica really pioneered in 1983, man. Kind of just get overused and it just kind of gets, it kind of gets old. And that is, it's quite apparent um, later on in Slayer's career, you know, the meme of just like, <laughs> I'll put it up. I'll put it up, but it, it's just... Uh...
Though, Show No Mercy, the album, this was a very consistent album all the way through. And there were three songs in particular that really hit it home for me. That were like, man, these are great songs. And the rest of them were all good. They were good songs. So I'm going to put each individual score up for you guys. And you can see what I thought of each of these. And as you can see, I couldn't decide between the final command or Metal Storm Face the Slayer. And so therefore, adding those up, dividing by the amount of songs on the album, which was 10, we get our final score of 7.34 Dave Mustaines out of 10. Which leaves just one more, boys. Let's get it. And what really stands out about this song is that it's so much damn fun, dude. This song is great. It just gets you jacked up. It gets you ready to go. That main riff is a classic thrash riff, man. Oh, yes. How does the birth of thrash metal sound? Oh, dude. What an epic song. It was it's so much fun. Like, it's not, there's no over technicality. There's no trying too hard to create something. It was just, it was just dudes inspired by metal trying to make the heaviest, most brutal, fastest, most fun metal they could. <laughs> The main riff of this song, the way they do that little gallop on the guitar and they mix that with the double kick in the background. When this first came out, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. The double kick really in time with the gallop of the guitar, palm muted, that heaviness, that dual rhythm guitar sound was so fascinating for people to hear at this point in time. This is really where you hear it for the first time on like actual recordings and releases. So you could really say that this song in particular was one of the the forefathers of the bass of the thrash sound. Song, The Four Horsemen, definitely better than The Mechanics. And um, yeah, let's move on to the next one. I love that super bouncy in between riff and the way Lars is just going boom, 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 boom. It's a lot of fun. This is an underrated song in this album. I hear a lot of people say like, oh, Motor Breath, uh, terrible song. It's not a terrible song. Oof. You can hear that this is a Dave Mustaine song, especially when we go back and listen to the Killing Is My Business record. The, the way it jumps around, the way it moves around, the way it grooves around is so much different. I think it adds freshness to thrash metal. It really gives thrash metal more substance. <laughs> Lars Ulrich with that kind of like hi-hat and the cymbal in the background while they're playing this main riff. Oof. If bro, behave with that roaring bass. Let's go back. Cliff, buddy. That's so special. That's so incredibly special, man. And speaking of Cliff, let's go to Anesthesia Pulling Teeth. Now, I hear, like, it's, it's the weirdest thing. People are just like, oh, I don't like that song. Like, what? How do you... The thing is, is that what he's doing here isn't overly complicated. It's just minor third triads. But the thing is, is that other people weren't doing this on the bass. It's his sound. It's his vibe. It's his energy as he's playing this. And he just, he was so unique. I've seen Metallica live 
a few times. And one time, Rob Trujillo played this live, man, and brought tears to my eyes. And on the big screen in the back, they had they had a picture of Cliff from um, that uh, epic show uh, when they played out in the field. <laughs> okay, I think I definitely got some hair whiplash there. If anyone was saying, like, what's the essence of thrash? What's the first, like, pure essence of thrash? I'd show them whiplash because it just, it entails everything about thrash. Just the, like, it is bare bones. It's nothing too special, but it's just straightforward and in your face. Good song. Next up is a Dave song, a Dave Mustaine song. And uh, this, I love this song. This is one of my favorite Metallica riffs of all time. I love the way it's just, it's so unique. It just makes such a groovy, groovy, jumpy sound that isn't replicated anywhere else, even in Megadeth. And this is a Dave Mustaine song. I, I, I really wish that somehow Dave would reuse this riff or make a song around this riff. It's definitely like a top 10 Metallica riff all time for me. It's so unique. <laughs> So another way you know that this is a Dave song is the the kind of staccato at the end of the chorus riff. Let's listen to this uh, chorus riff real quick. Damn. And that, that's not something Metallica ever uses too, too often. And uh, that's just another signature way of knowing that this is a Dave song. Here are those staccato riffs again. So in between each quick solo, you're going to hear a couple power chords played. It sounds fantastic. Let's hear it. That's great, that's Signature Dave. <laughs> Wasn't that sick? Uh, man, that riff is so, I feel, it feels so familiar every time I listen to it. I, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, Cannibal Corpse did a fantastic cover of this song. Go check it out. That riff is so tasty. It's so good. Right, so after those last two completely underrated Metallica songs, we now have probably one of, if not the most overrated Metallica song of all time. is with seek and destroy after the main riff which is it's cool everything else is just slowed down it's boring you have that up tempo section later on at the end but it's just it's 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 a boring song uh live it's great i think it brings the rest of the album down i think this is the worst song on the album Dude, I remember the first time I heard this song, it was actually mind-blowing. It was like so fast. It was just what I needed as that 14-year-old, 15-year-old kid. I just needed that aggression. And this song, this song is great. I love this song. This song, like I said, is a culture song and it's all about spreading metal to the masses it's about bringing metal to people the lyric is we're trying to get the message to you metal militia that second main riff the dun 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 dun. it's such a complete kind of opposite than the first main riff and it slows down the tempo just a bit so it like pushes you forward and smacks you in the face with that main riff but then it's like hey it's all good buddy relax we're trying to get the message to you dun 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 Metal militia. That's it, folks. That's the end of Kill 'Em All. The birth of thrash metal. Let's see the verdict. So, what makes Metallica so special is how tight this album is, especially for 1983. It's like these are just young kids. They get together, they're playing so tight. Everything is heavy, everything's fast. 
and it was the birth of thrash metal. This album is good. This album is very, very good. I mean, this album ranks on its own. It's easily a top five, six metallic album for sure. Let's see, I got the individual scores up there on the screen for each song. My favorites were Phantom Lord, The Four Horsemen, Hit the Lights, Jump in the Fire. Man, these songs were, this whole album just had me going. Uh, I, I, I love it. I love this album. All right, let's get a drum roll, please, for the final score of Kill Em All. 8.01 Dave Mustaine's out of 10. So let's tally up the final rankings to see who came fourth, third, second, and first. In fourth place with 6.43 out of 10, we have Anthrax's Fist Full of Metal. And while I respect this album for being the one of the first thrash albums and being thrashy, it just doesn't hold up to this day. It's a little boring, it's not very tight, and it could use a bit better songwriting all around. In second place, we have, with 7.34 out of 10, Show No Mercy by Slayer. Listen, Slayer has never been the tightest, uh, they've never been the most talented, but they play some great thrash metal, and this is a great example of that. Some of my favorite songs off this album were Metal Storm and Tormentor, and this is a great debut album. This is much better than Fistful of Metal, but it doesn't quite stack up to second and first place. And in second place, we have Kill Em All by Metallica with a final score of 8.01 out of 10. And that leaves first place for best freshman thrash album from the big four with Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good by the almighty Megadeth with a final score of 8.14 out of 10. All right, so there's the final scores. I am no doubt going to get some backlash, not only from you in the public, but uh, from some of my buddies. I feel they're gonna have some choice words to say about my final scores here. These are the final scores, man. The scores have spoken. There's no way these can be wrong. You're gonna have to deal with it. I have made a Spotify playlist. You can find a link down below to the best songs from all of these albums I compiled into one awesome playlist for you guys to go and listen to to really just get a quick overview of what it was like. Stay heavy, stay brutal, go down below, follow me at The Heaviest Show on Instagram and you can stay up to date with all the latest polls and voting so you can have your say in what the next video may be. Thanks for watching.